All right, so we're going to do a lesson um, on left-hand limits and right-hand limits for the most part. Okay, so um, that's what these notations mean in our first problem here. We have the limit as x approaches 3 with a little negative sign. So that means 3 from the left. And then this one is the limit as x approaches 3 with a little plus sign. That means from the right. And then our last one is just a regular limit um, with no plus sign. And for this limit to exist, it must approach, the limit must approach the same value from the left and from the right. All right, so um, this one, I want to go over a couple ways to think about this. So if we're plugging in numbers from the left, okay, that we want to plug in numbers that are getting closer and closer and closer to 3, but from the left side of 3. So that would be like 2.9, 2.99. 2.999, kind of like that first day we did limits and we made the table. Okay, so those are the kind of values you're plugging in for x. Okay, and so if that's the case, that's um, making the denominator smaller and smaller and smaller. So like that would be negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001, all right, and so on. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero on the denominator. And so when the numerator stays constant and the denominator gets really, really, really small, the fraction, the whole fraction that we have here is going to explode. It's going to go to infinity. Okay, so the only question is, does it go to positive infinity or does it go to negative infinity? So that's where the from the left really comes into play. If I'm plugging in numbers to the left of 3 and I'm subtracting 3, 2.9 minus 3 is a negative number. This is a positive 1 on top. So I'm going to have a positive 1 divided by a negative. I know it's going to infinity. Positive divided by a negative is negative infinity. Okay, so I can kind of apply the same logic to here, except I'm coming from the right now. So instead of these numbers, I'm going to be plugging in like 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, and so on. So my denominator is still going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, 0.1. 0 0.01, 0 0.001. So the fraction itself is still going to explode. It's going to go to infinity. But now since I'm plugging in numbers to the right of 3, when I subtract 3 from those, I get a positive. So it's a positive divided by a positive. So this one's going to give me positive infinity. Okay, we can bear that out in the graph over here. So we know this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, because that's what makes the denominator 0. It is a bottom-heavy function, so we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Uh, I'm going to plug in 0 to get a point. Uh, if I plug in 0, I get negative a third, so that's going to be right about there. And so I can draw in my graph. One curve will go in this section here. The other curve, uh, there's no togetherness because it's not a perfect square down there. So the other curve will have to go up here. All right, so I can see that if I approach uh, positive 3, this is x equals 3, the vertical asymptote. That is the number I'm approaching right here in my limit. So if I approach 3 from the left, that would be on this curve right here, and I would be going to negative infinity. If I approach 3 from the right, I would be following this curve right here, and I would be going to positive infinity. Okay, so this limit does not exist. And whenever a limit doesn't exist, it's always a good idea to give a reason. How do we know that? And so there's a couple different ways. You could say that um, the limits do not approach a value. They approach infinity, which um, is unbounded behavior. So that's one way to explain it. We will explain it that way on another problem. But this way, the much easier way is just to say that the limits from the left does not equal the limit from the right. All right, they don't approach the same infinity, even though they are approaching infinity. So um, I'm going to write this out with our notation here. So because the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 1 over x minus 3 does not equal the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 1 over x minus 3. All right, next one. So very similar problem, um, except we have the squared on the bottom. So um, this one doesn't have a left-hand and right-hand limit, but we can write our own in here. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left, 1 over x minus 3 squared, 
and then the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 1 over x minus 3 squared. All right, so again, if I'm plugging in like 2.9, 2.99, I'm getting really, really small on the denominator, so my fraction is going to explode. I'm going to infinity. But this time, even though I'm plugging in numbers that are smaller than 3, the squared on the bottom is going to keep my denominator positive no matter what. So I'm always going to have a positive divided by a positive. So this is going to be positive infinity. And then if I plug in numbers from the right of 3, I'm going to get a positive as well. So same deal. I'm going to end up with positive infinity there. And so since my left-hand limit and right-hand limit both equal the same, I'm putting it in quotes, value. Infinity is not a value, but the limits do equal the same thing. Then we can say that this limit is equal to positive infinity. All right. Now there is another answer to this limit question, which I will tell you about in a second. But let's go over and graph so we can see visually that this is true. So we have that vertical asymptote at x equals 3, same as the last problem. It's bottom heavy, so we have the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, I'm going to plug in 0 to get a point. So that would be um, 1 over 9. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. That's going to be above my x-axis right there. So I can draw one of my curves in right here. And then this graph does have togetherness because we have that perfect square in the denominator. So that means my other curve would have to be in this quadrant here. You could also plug in like four and get the same result from that. If I plug in four, I get like one, four, one. And that's this point right here. All right, so I can see that if I follow my graph from the left of x equals three, which is my asymptote, then I am approaching positive infinity from the left. And if I follow from the right, I am also approaching positive infinity. Okay, so this is the best answer to say that this limit is equal to positive infinity. That is great. That's how I want you to do it. But I do want you to be aware that there's another answer because on multiple choice questions, you may see it written another way. Um, and it's just good to know that um, this is actually not a, a real solution, right? It's not, a, it's not equal to a real number, right? It's equal to infinity. Okay, so anytime that your limit is uh, not equal to a real number, that limit actually does not exist. Okay, so that's the other answer here. Limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over x minus 3 squared does not exist. Okay, but if you say it does not exist, that means you have to tell me why. Okay, and you can't use the same reason we used on, on this one because the limits do equal each other. They are the same value. Again, value in quotes there. Okay, so the reason here is because if the limit is not approaching a, a real number. Okay. So it's approaching infinity, and we call that unbounded behavior. So that's what you would write. This limit does not exist because of unbounded behavior. Okay, but this is just so much easier to write. All you have to do is write positive infinity. First of all, unbounded behavior is ambiguous. Does that mean it's unbounded in the positive direction? So it goes positive infinity. Is it unbounded in the negative direction? Does it go to negative infinity? Is it unbounded differently on the left and the right? Okay, we might have used uh, like our example from up here in that scenario, but still, it's an ambiguous definition. So this just isn't as good, all right? It's correct, would be accepted on the free response if it was ever to show up there. Um, it won't show up there on the free response, but if it did, that would be acceptable. But this answer is just way better. It, it gives you everything you need. You know it's unbounded because it's infinity. So you know in your head that means does not exist, but it's more descriptive. It tells you the function is going up to positive infinity um, as x approaches 3 from both sides. All right, so I definitely like this version of the answer way better. Just wanted you to be aware of both types. All right, so we've seen uh, this function a couple times now. This is the signum function. So I'm just going to go ahead and graph it over here. Then we can talk about these limits. So um, if I plug in, I can't plug in 2. But if I plug in any number to the right of 2, I get positive 1. So I'm going to have an open circle at 2, and then it goes to the right like that. And if I plug in any number to the left of 2, I will end up with negative 1. So open circle there, and then to the left. 
All right, so the limit as x approaches two from the left, I would have to be following this part of the graph because this one up here doesn't have anything left of two. And so that would be approaching negative one, that open circle right there. Okay, limit as x approaches two from the right, I would have to be following this function up here because this one doesn't have anything to the right of two. And that is approaching positive one. So therefore my limit does not exist. And same reason as the first problem because the limit as x approaches two from the left of the absolute value of x minus two divided by x minus two does not equal the limit as x approaches two from the right of the absolute value of x minus two divided by x minus two. All right, so we graphed a step function in our pre-cal review, so we're gonna revisit that here. Um, the step function we will need to graph right here is um, shifted to the right two units. So if you knew what the parent function looked like, but I never really remember what the parent function looks like myself. So I always start just by plugging in numbers. Now I do wanna point out that our limit is approaching one, not approaching two. So just be careful about that. Okay, so um, we're gonna plug in, um, actually I'm gonna plug in two. I wanna start with two first, because two minus two is zero. So one, two, there's a point right there. Okay, and then I'll go out to three and then I'll go backwards. Okay, so remember this is the round down function. So if I plug in 2.1, then I, I'll, I'll write a couple out here. So if I plug in 2.1, that will give me 0.1 inside the brackets, which will round down to zero. And if I plug in 2.8, that'll give me 0.8 inside the brackets, which will round down to zero. And so the next step will be when I plug in three and I get positive one. So this is that horizontal line right there, ends in an open circle. And then at positive three, it jumps up there. And so we will go backwards as well. So if I plug in one, I get negative one right there to an open circle. If I plug in zero, I get negative two over there. Okay, so that's as far as we need to go because x equals one. Now I'm gonna draw a dotted line, dotted vertical line, but this is not an asymptote. All right, I'm just drawing this to show us where we're looking. So we are trying to look at x equals one. That's that dotted line right there. Okay, so the first problem says the limit as x approaches one from the left. So there is nothing left of one until I get to this little segment right there. Okay, so that's approaching that open circle, which is located at negative two. Second one, x approaches one from the right. So I don't wanna approach on the right over here because there's nothing there. I have to jump up to this step, this, X is approaching negative one. All right, and so same answer as our other problem, first problem and third problem, this does not exist. And it's the same reason because the limit as X approaches one from the left of the greatest integer of X minus two does not equal the limit as X approaches one from the right of the greatest integer of x minus two. All right, so these next ones are like more complicated limit problems. Uh, these are gonna um, cause you to use a lot of the limit properties kind of in combination with each other to break it into smaller problems that you know how to do. Okay, so this one is not a function I would expect you to know how to graph. And um, I would feel comfortable putting this on a non-calculator section. So you wouldn't be able to just plug it in the calculator. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you should recognize the absolute value of x minus two over x minus two. That's a function that you've seen before. And then x cubed is another function you've seen before. So we're gonna split this into two limits and we're gonna break it up right there at that multiply symbol. So the limit as x approaches two from the left of x cubed, and we're gonna multiply that by the limit as x approaches two from the left of the absolute value of x minus two divided by x minus two. All right, and so this one with just a regular power function, you can just do direct substitution. Two cubed is eight. And then this one, you would probably wanna graph it, although we've already done it. So I'm gonna come back up here. The limit as x approaches two from the left is equal to negative one. So our answer on this one is equal to negative eight.
All right, this next one looks almost identical, um, except it's approaching, um, well, it's approaching the same value, X approaches uh, two from the left, but this one has the greatest integer up here. Okay, now having the greatest integer divided by the same thing, that is not a function that you should know. That's not a function we've graphed before. So I'm um, saying that because we are actually gonna break this into three pieces. I'm gonna break it at this multiply symbol right here. I'm also gonna break it at the division sign. So we're gonna do the limit as x approaches two from the left of x cubed, multiplied by the limit as x approaches two from the left of the greatest integer of x minus two, and then multiply by the limit as x approaches. So those are on the numerator. So if we take the two things off the numerator, we're still gonna have a one on top over x minus two. All right, you may wonder like, why didn't I just put all of this divided by this limit down here? Or sorry, not that limit, but the limit as X approaches two from the left of X minus two like that. So remember that when you do the division property, the limit on the denominator cannot be equal to zero. And this limit would be equal to zero. So that's why that doesn't work. So I'm gonna split it up and I'm gonna do it over here. And that's gonna allow me to, um, solve that that limit by itself, um, then I can combine my answer back with these others. All right, so uh, the first one is um, eight. We can do direct substitution just like we did last time. Okay, this one, we will need to look at the graph, okay? Because depending on if it comes from the left or the right, that, that could give us different answers on the greatest integer function. So I'm gonna flip back to the previous page because we've already graphed this one right here. All right, so now I'm not approaching one anymore. I'm approaching two. That's uh, this value over here. Um, I'll do a little smaller dotted line right there. So if I'm approaching two from the left, I'm going to be on this segment right there. So that's going to be negative one. Okay, so that limit as X approaches two from the left is equal to negative one. All right, what about this one? So if I plug in numbers, I'm getting closer and closer to two. Um, well, if I come from the left side, then I'll be plugging in, my denominator will be negative. So it'll be a positive divided by a negative, which would be negative infinity. Because the numbers on the bottom get really small, the fraction explodes. If I plug in numbers to the right of two, uh, my denominator will be a positive number. So it'll be a positive divided by a positive, but the numbers get really, 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 really small, and the fraction explodes. So from one side, I get negative infinity. From the other side, I get positive infinity. Um, and, oh, I just realized that I actually didn't put my from the left. So you can ignore everything I just said about from the right because we don't care about it. We care about from the left, um, which means that this is approaching negative infinity. Maybe helpful to graph this one. Okay, it can be a quick sketch. X equals two asymptote. Bottom heavy, Y equals zero. Plug in zero, negative a half. There's your left side go into negative infinity. All right, so anytime an answer has an infinity in there, that dominates everything else. Could be infinity multiplied by something, could be infinity plus something, could be infinity minus something, okay? Infinity dominates, that means this whole answer is infinity. The only thing that could come into play is um, if you have a negative times a negative, which is exactly what we have here. So it's not gonna be negative infinity because it's a negative times a negative, it's gonna be a positive infinity as my answer there. All right, this next part just says, be careful with this whole splitting it up into different limits multiplied together. That doesn't always yield a result that's gonna be useful. So for instance, if we did that on this problem, we would do the limit as X approaches three from the right of X squared minus X minus six, and then multiply by the limit as X approaches three from the right of one over X minus three. And so if I plugged in three, that's three squared is nine, minus nine, sorry, three squared is nine, minus three is six, minus six is zero. And then over here, uh, if we're coming from the right side, it's a positive divided by a positive, which makes that a positive infinity. So we end up with zero multiplied by infinity, and uh, that is an indeterminate form. So the one we've learned about the most is zero divided by zero, indeterminate form, which doesn't mean the answer is zero, doesn't mean the answer is undefined. It means we cannot determine what the answer is using that method that I just did. Okay, so same thing here. We'll learn more about these other indeterminate forms later in the year. 
Okay. But for now, just know that that is not a result that's going to help you. Okay. You already know how to do this problem. You factor X minus three times X plus two. You cancel, you plug in, this limit's equal to five. So don't forget about those old methods as well. Okay. If you can do algebra, do algebra first. If you can't do algebra, split it up like that. All right. Our last problem is going to be, um, we're going to do a piecewise function and graph it, and we're going to introduce limit as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. Okay, we'll talk a lot more about these in our next lesson, but this is a nice little introduction. So they're reminding you here that the absolute value function has a piecewise definition. The absolute value of x is equal to x, what's on the inside, if x is bigger than, greater than, or equal to zero. And x absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is less than zero. So if x is less than zero, that means it's a negative number, and then you have to multiply it by a negative to get a positive. So that's where that comes from. All right, so this top part is going to be 2x minus 1, and then we'll use the x right there, x minus 3. And so that's true if x is greater than or equal to zero. And then for the other one, we'll do 2x minus 1 divided by negative x minus 3. And that'll be true if x is less than zero. So I'm just replacing the absolute value with the piecewise definition, and I'm making a piecewise version of my, my big function here. All right, so sketch the graph. So we'll have a few things we want to find. Um, let's do vertical asymptotes. So this one has a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So that'll be true if x is greater than or equal to zero. This one has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So that'll be true if x is less than zero. Horizontal asymptotes, um, they're balanced. So this would be y equals positive two. That'll be true if x is greater than or equal to zero. This is balanced, and so that'll be y equals negative two if x is less than zero. Um, X-intercept. So if I plug in zero, no, sorry, if I set the numerator equal to zero, I'll get um, one half comma zero. All right, and that would be the same answer for this bottom one. And so since x is positive, that's going to only really apply to the top function because x is greater than zero. All right, y-intercept, this is the one where if I plug in zero, I get negative one divided by negative three. So I get positive a third. All right, same thing down here. And uh, this is actually going to share. They're going to share that point. It's a closed circle point up here. It's an open circle point down here, but the closed circle will take precedent. It'll fill it in. All right, I think we got everything we need. So x equals 3. y equals 2, but only going in the positive x direction. So that's this way. x equals negative 3. And then y equals negative 2, but that one only goes in the negative x direction, so only this way. Then my points, 1 half, 0 right there, 0, 1 third right there. So one of my curves has to go through those points, and it's going to be in this section right here. So like that. All right, the other curve has that point as well. You may want to try to plug in one more number. Let's do that. Let's do f of negative 1. Okay, that's this point right here. So that's going to go into the bottom function, 2 times negative 1 minus 1 divided by negative negative 1 minus 3. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Positive 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So this is 3 halves. Negative 1 and 1.5. So right about there. And so this curve is going to start at that point. Remember, it shares the y-intercept, and it's going to go like that and like that. There is no togetherness on either part of the graphs. So in this right section, we do not want to be down here because that would be togetherness. So it's going to go up here. And this left section, we don't want to be up here because that will be right next to this one. So it will have to go down here. All right, so the limits. What is the limit as x approaches infinity? Well, that's if we let x get really big in the positive direction, it'll keep going this way. 
So we'd be following this graph and following this graph and following this graph. And this graph just keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer to this horizontal asymptote. And so that's what it approaches. It approaches positive two. Then as X goes to negative infinity, that's on this part. Now we're following this piece and this piece going to the left forever, forever and ever and ever. It's getting closer and closer and closer to this asymptote. So that one's equal to negative two. The horizontal asymptotes, y equals two. If x is greater than or equal to zero, y equals negative two if x is less than zero. Okay, so notice that this infinity, this limit at infinity is the same as the horizontal asymptote. This limit as x approaches negative infinity is the same as that horizontal asymptote. That's what these limits are. These limits are horizontal asymptotes, okay? We'll discuss those more in our next lesson. Hope you all enjoyed this one. See you for the next one.